news to me. Do you get lost in all of the information overload? Join me, Steve Lilly, with The Voice in the Wilderness for history, news, education, and biblical insights as we contend for fundamental Christianity and American freedoms. Alphabet soup, ASAP, as soon as possible. PIN, personal identification number. SSN, social security number. All have been common for some time now, but now it is DEI, CRT, LGBTQIA, and the list could go on. We have gone from using acronyms to make words shorter to politicize them. DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion. It's just a shorter way of saying that we're going to enforce employees to accept the alternative lifestyle. CRT, critical race theory. It's just a way to teach people that the color of their skin is the way to judge someone. Commonly, we call it racism. And that their descendants of those who were oppressed have the right to reparations. Uh, by the way, the Bible teaches there is only one race. LGBTQIA+, just a way for us to empathize with those who choose an alternative lifestyle. The Bible calls it sodomy. Companies are now hiring employees not based on their merits, but based on the wokeness of the individual. Gone are the days of who is best option for the job, but who makes our company look more diverse? They make it seem as if they're trying to be inclusive, but they are in fact being exclusive through the policies and procedures given. Taking a quick break. Mission at risk. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. From here and far, there are many enemies of the gospel. Yet, our Lord has promised to be with us always. The Holy Spirit gives wisdom and strength, risks and obstacles to overcome. Mission at Risk was written of 70 years testimony, not to discourage, but to document evidence of both travail and triumph. Order yours today to be encouraged in the Lord. Back to it. CRT, critical race theory, was popularized during the 1990s. However, it has become more newsworthy the last couple of years. With school boards being taken over by the left, CRT has become the mainstay of the public indoctrination centers around the country. Gone are the days of teaching that Jefferson, Franklin, Adams, Washington, and Hancock were patriotic men who fought for the founding of this nation. Now, children are being taught that they were white slaveholders who treated their fellow man in abhorrent ways. Visiting historic sites, the narrative is being dogmatically taught how the white owners horribly treated their fellow man. Often, we have left asking with the question, how did they know this? Is this documented somewhere that this is true? While it is true, there were some cruel taskmasters Others gave testimony of God's provision in their life. A great example of this is Phyllis Wheatley. Instead of rewriting history, we should learn from it. The key to the present is understanding the past. To destroy the past or twist the truth into an agenda-driven narrative is the sure destruction of a godly society. Proverbs 22, 28, and 29 admonishes us to remove not the ancient landmarks. Taking a quick break, pausing to share this great resource with you. The distant whistle of the train caused Sundar's heart to jump, and suddenly his mind raced out of control. Life flashed before him. Out of this valley would emerge either life or death. Follow the miraculous steps of Sundar Singh in this gripping, novel-style book that is sure to challenge your walk with Christ. Order yours today at www dot the voice in the wilderness dot org another acronym ev much has been said recently about electronic vehicles the biden administration has stated that by the year 2030 half of all new vehicles should be electronic this is an effort to curb climate change by the way it is for the good of us but with recent winter storms it is more apparent that ev are not practical in cold weather states or nations during the cold weather, EV's driving range is reduced by 70%. It also takes longer for the battery to charge during the winter. 
Several years ago, the city of Asheville, North Carolina, purchased five EV buses for approximately $5 million as a way to promote the climate change agenda by the city council. However, currently, three of the five buses are not in use due to several mechanical and software issues. The company that sold the buses to the city has gone bankrupt, and they were the only ones who created the particular parts for their buses. The other two buses have limited ranges, approximately 78 miles, during the winter months, which is causing stress on the rest of the fleet. The cost of maintenance of these buses is astonishing as well, with nearly $250,000 being spent. While the ID idea of EV may be good, is it practical? By the way, the city spent $550,000 for biodiesel buses since the purchase of the EV buses. Well, that has been news to me. Final break, sharing with you a resource from The Voice in the Wilderness, preparing for Resurrection Day with the Matthew 28 verse set. Baseball size cards have one verse, keywords, tidbits from history, and tips to help you remember truths found in God's Word. Memorize and collect all 20 cards. Great for individual study or family devotions. On a side note, when I was in 6th grade, my family moved from New Hampshire to Tidewater, Virginia. During the winter season, the philosophy on how to deal with the snow was drastically different. In New Hampshire, the snow plows were out pushing the snow and salting the roads, ensuring they were safe for travel. In Virginia, the thought was, God brought it, and he will take it away. Let's take this to a spiritual emphasis. Are you out plowing and salting this world for Christ, preparing for his return? Or are you the kind that believes that we should just sit idly by, waiting for his return? This is Steve Lilly with The Voice in the Wilderness, and this has been News to Me.